Hey guys, Matt here. Sunday night, just got in from a run and realized I didn't do my video on Noah yet today. I was, almost forgot. Um, so we're going to start, we're just going to do Noah today. We're just going to do Hebrews 11, 7. And I'm not going to go through all these, but I want to do, uh, I want to do Abraham. He's amazing. Uh, I, they're all great. But I, I want to do Jacob too, because I can totally relate with Jacob. And then we'll, maybe we'll do Rahab, but Today we're just going to do 11.7. Uh, yesterday we saw, we, we talked a little bit about Enoch and how he walked with God. Uh, and we got into 11.6, which I just love. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. I want to be rewarded by God. And I know you do too. And that leads us to, uh, to Hebrews 7. By faith, Noah. Being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen. As yet unseen. That's faith, right? Faith doesn't operate by logic, by reason, by sight. Faith operates in the future and in the invisible. And here we see it. Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear. I love that. Constructed in art. For the saving of his household. Interesting note on that we're going to come to in a minute. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Okay, so we see we see the author uh, brings up Cain and Abel first. That would make sense chronologically, but it also sets the table for faith versus works. So, so by faith, Abel believes in the blood. That brings us to, to Enoch. Where he walked with God. So, so the first thing faith does is it, it looks at, at the shed blood. The second thing it does is it, it God changes us on the inside. And we saw that in Enoch. He just walked with God. God did something. And then three, the, the faith moves to Noah here. Where Noah has a, a very, uh, very difficult assignment. And it's twofold. He's called to be a witness to the world. Uh... In, in, in Genesis 5, around the 30th verse, I think, it, 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 God calls him a witness and a preacher of righteousness. So at this time, the world was a wicked and dark place. And that's why in Matthew 24 it says, As in the days of Noah, when men were multiplying, just like today, there's 250,000 people born every day. And when half, what happens is when people multiply, sin multiplies. It must, because people are totally depraved, right? So we're living in the days of Noah again, I believe, but that's another video. Uh, so, so Noah has this rather large task, and that's to be a witness to the world, to be a preacher of righteousness and a witness to the world, and to build an ark. Now, uh, the interesting thing was, is Noah didn't know what an ark was. And Noah didn't know what rain was, right? God could have just came up to Noah and said, Noah, I want you to build a zinger because it's going to start pop-popping from the sky. I just made those words up, obviously. It really makes sense. But that's what it was like for Noah. He's like, rain? What's rain? But he didn't argue with God. In reverent fear, he acted in faith concerning the events as yet unseen. Right? He lived 500 miles from the ocean. He had never heard of an ark. He had never seen rain. And yet he built the Titanic in his driveway, three stories tall, a monstrosity, in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation who mocked him, who made fun of him, and yet he obeyed in reverent fear. And here's the thing about, about Noah. He got the call from God when he was 480 years old, and he said, build an ark for you and your household. And uh, he had to start it alone because he didn't have his three sons. So he was building an ark for a household that he technically didn't have yet. So it was faith on top of faith on top of faith. It's amazing. Uh, he had his sons around 500. The ark took 120 years to build. He was, he was over 600 years old when the ark was finished, right? And, and uh, the interesting thing about Noah was 
Uh, he didn't, his ministry uh, didn't have any converts, right? <laughs> Noah didn't convert anybody, although he was giving them the choice. I bet you anything, uh, he was what well, he must have been. He was, a, he was a witness to the world and a preacher of righteousness. So no doubt Noah was warning them and inviting them. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Uh, you're building this thing. We don't even know what it is. We don't know what a flood is. We don't believe you. And so they mocked, as they do today. And they turned their backs on Noah. And they died and went to hell, as they will today for those that turn their backs on the prophet of God discounting the Word of God and discounting the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're seeing in Hebrews. And that's the warning to the Hebrews. And that's why he brings up these people. Here's a, here's a, here's a guy <laughs> with faith, tremendous faith. And he didn't have one convert because he wasn't being measured by his numbers. He was being measured by his faithfulness. And that's the same with you and I. We're not necessarily, or well, not necessarily, we're not measured by our numbers. Why I said necessarily, because we may have a great fruit in our life spiritually because we spend a lot of time worshiping God, because we get on our knees and beg Him and spend time seeking Him and asking Him and drawing near. But even if we do those things, we still might not have fruit. But we're not going to be measured by our fruit. We're going to be measured by our faithfulness. We're not going to be measured by how many people said the, the prayer with us. We're going to be measured by our faithfulness, just like, just like Noah. And that's the call to us, the born-again believer in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation, uh, generation is, is, to, uh, is to preach the word in season and out of season. Preach the word. That's Noah. Tomorrow we look at uh, Abraham. It's going to be awesome. Peace.